Hey guys, I'm Inverse, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Strat Talk. Strat Talk is going to be a recurring series of videos that will discuss, break down, look at Company of Heroes, Build Orders, and Strategies. This first episode is going to focus on Korean Army's three rifle grenade opening that he used to much success in Tournament 21. Game Replays Tournament 21, where he lost to his clanmate Siberian Platoon in the finals of that tournament. He used this strategy every single game, at least every single game I watched of his that he played Americans. He mainly played Americans on Langra and Samoa. On Angleville, he played Brits. So these replays, we got three replays we're going to go through. We're going to look for, or we're going to look at the first 10 or 15 minutes or so of each. It's going to be one game on Langra, two games on Samoa. This first one, let's get her started, is against Skyland from the All-Stars clan. This is round three of the tournament. As this game's kind of getting started, I'm, I'm just going to go over the general build order. Like I said earlier, it is a three rifle, two grenades opening, so that means you get your first engineer. Build that out of the headquarters. You're going to go three rifles. Then you're going to queue up grenades right after that. You're going to get a fourth rifle after the grenades. And then you're going to get a triage center as soon as you can afford it. Now, the reason I like this build so much is because it's very interesting from an economical point of view. And it's very interesting from a tactical point of view. In terms of the economics, when you're adding up the resources spent, what you get for your money compared to say a fast bar or something like that you're spending a hundred manpower and 20 fuel on the grenade upgrade and you're spending 200 manpower 20 fuel on the on the trio center upgrade that's 300 manpower 60 fuel on infantry upgrades whereas if you had gone fast bars you would be spending 200 manpower 60 fuel so 100 manpower less and you would be getting slightly better infantry uh, damage output slightly more reliable and of course no munitions cost but you would also be draining more manpower over time you'd actually be losing more manpower than you would save in that 100 manpower because you're not, you don't have that super early triage and going triage after bars is kind of stretching things if your opponent goes straight tier 3 and you go triage after bars you're going to be in a little bit of trouble unless you did a lot of early damage with your bars. With this strategy, as we're going to see in this video or in this replay and in later replays, it allows Korean army to transition fairly comfortably into a fast mate, which is prefer which is his preferred transition, as well as weapon support center if his opponent shows something that weapon support center would be good against. And aside from that, the tactical benefits that this strategy gives is, in my opinion, the most important and something that people kind of overlook when they look at fast grenade builds because traditionally fast grenade builds have been fairly terrible and the reasons for that are the scatter on grenades has in previous patches been absolutely horrendous and what I mean by that is, let's say you click on a on a MG squ uh, squad and tell your rifleman to throw a grenade at the MG. In previous patches, sometimes the MG would go right in the middle of the three men. That's ideal, that's perfect. Sometimes, however, the, the grenade would go to one man, it would go to another man, it would completely overshoot, it would undershoot. It was very inconsistent and that made fast grenade plays against Wehrmacht very inconsistent because you could do a lot of damage early on or you could do absolutely no damage early on. And if your opponent didn't react in time and didn't move his MG at all, he would, in a lot of situations, be in perfectly fine shape because the grenade, more often than not, would not deal significant damage. It might kill a single squad member on that MG, but that's perfectly acceptable for the Wehrmacht player in a situation like that. Now, in this most recent patch, the scatter on grenades has been drastically reduced now, if you throw a grenade at an MG squad, it almost always goes right in the middle of the three men. And it almost always kills at least two of them, sometimes completely killing the squad, depending on a little bit of luck and also the health of the squad. Now, that completely changes the dynamic of early grenades in the US versus Wehrmacht matchup. And the main reason for that is 
you don't have to kill anything with the grenades in order to make them effective. As we're going to see right here, this is kind of the ideal scenario. We're going to see Korean Army come in right now. He's got his flank set up. This is the ideal situation. This is what you want to be doing with this strategy is flanking the moment you get grenades. This is your strong point. And he's going to get a grenade. He's going to get it off on the MG. He's going to kill the MG. And he's still going to have three infantry squads against his opponent's two Volks grenadiers. And as we see right here, another grenade coming in, forcing a retreat th right there, and Korean Army is going to be able to recruit this MG. Now, as I mentioned before, that's the ideal situation. You can never rely on that happening. This is something that a very good player who is very attentive and always watching his units will not allow, but that's perfectly fine. You're going into this strategy saying, I don't need to do damage with my grenades. The damage you do with your grenades is getting your opponent to move his MG because if your opponent does not move his MG in previous patches that would be perfectly fine because there was say a 60-70% chance that that grenade would kill either nobody or a single man and that's a perfectly reasonable sacrifice for a Wehrmacht player to make he can dodge grenades with Volksgrenadiers perfectly fine it's more difficult to dodge grenades with the MG and if he can safely keep his MG set up that makes it a lot easier for him to defend any grenade based attacks in this situation you absolutely as the as the Wehrmacht player absolutely have to be moving your mg against a, gr a grenade flank it's simply far too dangerous as this was as this kind of shows to keep your mg there because you're probably going to lose it and even if you are able to recruit afterwards that's a lot of manpower damage being dealt and at that point the grenades have absolutely paid for themselves so that's kind of the philosophy behind why this strategy works as we're going to see in later games it's not always going to be that clean when you're going up against a player who's paying attention a lot you're not going to get a lot of damage done. You are going to force movement, and that's, as I've mentioned, all you really need because that essentially negates the MG. You're going to have three rifle squads against, generally speaking, two Volks Grenadiers if your opponent went for a quote-unquote standard opener, which would be two Volks and an MG in most situations. Now... One of the traditional weaknesses of a fast grenade play has been snipers, and the main reason for that being you're investing in a tech that is good against... Well, there goes that sniper. <laughs> but you're investing in a, in a tech that is very good against static, uh, static units, which, generally speaking, is the MG. Of course, it's not completely static, but it's static relative to other infantry and that you need some sort of pre-planning in order to move it and the sniper is by definition an extremely mobile unit you have a very small surface area to get grenade hits off it's rarely rarely ever useful to attempt to throw a grenade at a sniper we're gonna see korean army try a few times and that's one of the reasons why korean army is one of my favorite players is because he does these little tiny things that sometimes work usually don't but when they work they give him absolutely enormous advantages but generally speaking a sniper is an ideal follow-up to this kind of opening for a Vermont player of course the follow-up that Korean army is going to show being mainly a fast M8 in 90% of situations following up this build is an ideal follow-up to the sniper because the M8 obviously not going to care very much about the sniper going to be able to do decent damage can almost always one shot a sniper if it manages to get a hit off and that's really in my opinion the strength of this strategy lies in its flexibility it's a completely standard strategy you can do this on pretty much any map in any in any situation against Wehrmacht and you can come out perfectly fine with it it's absolutely a strategy that you can use against almost anyone traditionally fast grenade builds have not worked against good players because it's relatively easy to dodge the grenades but you're using the grenades to displace mgs and to use that opening to charge in with your rifles 
Now, one opening that doesn't really uh, that doesn't really care too much about fast grenades is Volks Volks Sniper MG, or really any sniper build after one or two Volks Grenadiers. And that is because, as I mentioned earlier, the sniper doesn't care about grenades. Grenades very pretty much useless against snipers. Now, it's perfectly fine. And the reason for that is the timing of your grenades hitting still gives you a flank timing that comes when Volks Volk Sniper MG is vulnerable. And that time is after the sniper but before the MG kind of in that little in between area. You're going to have grenades and you're going to be flanking if you've set up your flank properly before his MG is out on the field. And that still gives you an opportunity to deal damage to a Volks Volk Sniper MG player and also gives you the opportunity to, to transition after the bars into something like a Jeep which we see Korean Army do in one of these games or a fourth rifle which is more often than not the follow-up that's Korean Army's preferred follow-up after the triage center not or after the after the grenades rather he goes three rifles grenades fourth rifle triage center that's generally 90% of his games that's going to be his build. He, you can throw in a a Jeep in there instead of the fourth rifle. Uh, it's definitely not required and you can definitely get by without it even against grenade builds or not grenade sniper builds rather because as we see right here we've got a relatively fast M8 coming out. 10 minute M8 not too bad not excellent either but given the circumstances, the damage he's dealt, the stuff he's scouted, he actually just killed the tier 2 building before a pack could come out. I think it's before a pack could come out. Let me see. Yep, before a pack could come out. And that's going to give his M8 a lot of flexibility and a lot of room to maneuver. So with that in mind, uh, we're going to move on to game number two. It's going to be a game on Samoa. And we're going to look at a opening that doesn't go quite as smoothly as this one. I'll see you guys on the other side. All right, guys, we're back. We're going to be taking a look at a game on Samoa against Aljaz Fireball, also of All-Stars. This is round six of the tournament, I believe. The semifinals, maybe? Actually, not sure. But we're going to see the exact same build out of Korean Army. Three rifle, grenade, fourth rifle, triage center. And before we talk about the specifics of this build in this map, I kind of want to point out some cool little micro tricks uh, Korean Army employs. First of all, this little retreat right here. This gives him a little bit of an earlier cap on this munitions point because as you'll notice if you build this uh, build the barracks with the engineer and then simply right click and walk over your engineer is gonna walk all the way down here walk all the way over there the retreat of course retreats him right here at a far quicker speed and then allows him to walk straight up here it's not a big difference and it's definitely not going to win you a game or be the difference between a win and a loss but it's a little bit of benefit you get a little bit more munitions and it's tiny things like that that help you out at a very very high level and that help out a player like Korean Army be as good as he can be it's attention to the details and we're gonna see a few more attentions to details mainly with this first rifle squad now as we see him coming up on the strat point I want you to notice what he does with this rifle squad right here moves it to the front side of the of the strap point. This is very, very high level, very technical, but very helpful in a lot of situations. Now, this early in the game, not too important. You're not really going to see any infantry coming down here, capping this point right away after the first rifle squad's been built. Now we're going to see him do it again up here. Moving forward a little bit, keeping his rifle squad as far forward and as close to the enemy as possible so he has as much warning as possible for his opponent coming he can back out a little bit earlier he can get to the, the building right here a little bit earlier he has more time to react and that means 
for a greater percentage of his engagements, he's in a favorable position because he has more time to react to what his opponent is doing. So, that little nerd geekery out of the way, that's like, God, there's so many like really, really tiny things that Korean Army does that just makes him such an awesome, exciting player to watch. Little micro things, trying to shoot, tr trying to shoot uh, snipers with M8s by attacking ground and stuff like that. Building sandbags in weird places. He's a very, very technical, very exciting and entertaining player to watch. I definitely recommend any of you out there who have not watched Korean Army games to go to game replays and download some Korean Army games. He's a very interesting player to watch. Definitely one of my favorites and definitely one I would recommend you check out. Anyways, we have the the 4th Rifle Squad coming on the field right now. Now, I do want to talk about capping priorities with this build. Of course, it's an early grenade build, so you definitely have to be prioritizing munitions. I wouldn't necessarily say you prioritize them over fuel or over harassing or anything like that, but I would just say be consciously aware of your mun munitions income and consciously understand how much munitions you're generally going to need for a flank. Generally, 50 munitions by the time your grenades finish is a good number. If you can get up to 75, which is three grenades, you're going to be in great shape. That's a grenade for each of your riflemen. And in a situation like that, you're going to generally do a decent amount of damage. Now, as we see right here, Korean Army is setting himself up for his flank. He's going to hit right when grenades finish. This is very important. This is what separates good players from mediocre players, is the ability to completely and seamlessly time out stuff like this. As we see right here, coming in from three different angles with his rifles. And... As we're going to notice right here, there's going to be a grenade in on this church. Aljaz completely anticipating that, going to run away. But as I mentioned before, you don't need to do damage to the MG. Simply by forcing the MG to move, you're taking it out of the battle. As we see right here, the MG forced to retreat. And if we look at the kind of map control situation we see Korean Army in right now. He's isolated a Volksgrenadier right here, which is going to have to retreat through his rifle squads, and that's going to be very difficult. He's going to take a lot of damage on this Volk squad. If he doesn't lose it, he'll be very lucky. Uh, this was funny. He didn't do anything over there. But he's going to be able to cut off his opponent. He's going to be able to come down here and harass his opponent on the bottom, and as we see right here, this Volk Squad forced to retreat. And now we have four uh, four rifle squads against a Volk Squad, an MG, and a Sniper, I believe. I think. There's there's probably another uh, Tier 1 unit, but that's not too, too big of a deal. But look at the map control for Korean Army right now. Simply by, be able to, simply by being able to guarantee himself a victory in that first engagement. And that's almost you can think of the strategy as nearly guaranteeing you an early victory in that first flank and the reason for that is of course your opponent cannot use an mg in the battle unless he really unless he wants to lose it or risk hope he gets really really lucky because if you flank properly you set it up early enough you move properly you move at the correct times you should absolutely be able to do what Korean Army has done in the last game and also in this game where it wasn't nearly as effective. He didn't kill that MG right away, but he didn't need to because he forced it to run away. He forced it to move. And when an MG is moving, it might as well not exist. Whoops. It might as well just be nothing because there's, there's no use for it. It's not doing enough damage when it isn't moving. So that was a terrible grenade. Actually, not that terrible. But, as we see, transitioning into a triage center, going to be getting a, a supply art as well in a bit here, also going to lose a rifle, and there's the, there's the grenade on the, on the sniper, <laughs> that didn't work, but would have been so incredibly awesome if it had worked. Ah, uh, the bike died, the bike died. Okay, so we got the, the supply yard coming up right here. We're going to have a 
a motor pool come up very very shortly as well and Korean army is unique in the sense that and we're gonna see more of this next game but even against tier 2 Korean army loves his mates and the reason for that we do have a Jeep right here this is actually not gonna do anything let's actually before I talk about the M8 let's watch how terrible this Jeep is wait for it because this th this gave me a chuckle when I when I watched this replay the first time go Jeep go Jeep yes you can do it no no yeah that's that's what happens that's what happens he actually saw that grenade or that mine being planted as well so that was kind of funny that he hit that but anyways as I was as I was mentioning ah, runaway sniper as I was mentioning before uh, Korean army is one of those players who absolutely will go M8 even against a player who's already shown tier 2 and it's very interesting his philosophy behind it is simply he's completely confident in his ability to micro that M8 and use shot blocking cover houses and stuff like that to keep it alive and he uses it mainly as a source of mobility and he generally uses it in order to be able to move around the map and be active around the map without spending too much manpower and too much fuel on something like a Sherman or something like that. The M8 gives a lot of benefits, mainly in terms of being able to defend exterior outlying areas on the map, like this left-hand side, this right-hand side. It's relatively difficult for a pack or for an any sort of Wehrmacht AT to be very mobile. It is in S it's like by definition very, very immobile. The packs very slow, especially when they're cloaked. The Panzer Shreks are not generally that reliable. You do not want as a Wehrmacht player to be relying on Panzer Shreks as your main form of AT. And as you'll notice right here, Korean Army always hugging buildings, always keeping himself very very close to buildings and this is because if a pack shows up right here okay he just pops right back here if the pack shows up over here okay he can move over here if the packs over here he can slide back a little bit he's always keeping something around him and that was actually that was the attacking ground to try to hit a sniper which is awesome if it works again probably not going to work but hey why not the m mates not doing anything else so we might as well try to get lucky but yeah the the use of cover and the use of buildings is an essential reason why Korean Army is able to get an M8 in almost any situation and in a lot of situations where um, where other American players wouldn't even bother because it simply would not be worth it. It would cost too much, it wouldn't pay off at all. And especially on a map like Samoa where there's so many buildings and so many hedges in the middle right here. Like there's a pack right here. This pack is never going to get into a good position to shoot at this M8 unless this M8 moves from behind this house. Behind this house, he's completely, completely safe. I mean, unless a Shrek pops in right here, but even then he's got the blind spot on this side of the, of the, of the house. So it's very, very intelligent play by Korean Army. And it's one of those things that if you can inc manage to incorporate it in, into your play, if you can practice it, anything like that it's going to make you a better player because it's going to make it a lot more difficult for your opponent to react to what you're doing it's going to put a lot more stress on him because he's going to have to be focusing a lot more on your m8 and figuring out how to counter it which is far more difficult than simply countering infantry in the mid game and generally speaking it's going to make you a lot more difficult to deal with and that's going to give you more wins which is what we all want isn't it we all want more wins yay yay winning uh boom grenades grenades going off and mate will you survive you will survive and a grenade will, nope or a grenade rather will die but uh that's gonna be it for this second game we're gonna go very shortly on to a game number three the third and final finale match on Samoa once again because yay Samoa woo see ya alright guys welcome back 
let's get going with game number three. Oopsie daisy. Uh, this is the the third game of the finals of the tournament 21, I believe it was, uh, between Korean Army and Siberian Platoon, both of Soldiers of Liberty. And we're going to take one final look at this three rifle grenade opening, see if we can't point out, notice any little refinements, any little changes Korean Army has undertaken in his tournament run. I'm going to be speeding through this game a little bit quicker, probably going to go a little bit uh, a little bit shorter since we already know the gist of the build. We know generally what Korean Army is going to be doing. He's going to be getting three rifles, he's going to be getting grenades, he's going to be setting up a flank for when his grenades hit. He's going to be getting a fourth rifle after that, and then he's going to be getting a triage center as soon as he can afford it. Those are the primary steps that we're going to adhere to at all times when trying out this strategy. This is actually my main strategy on Samoa right now. I absolutely love it on Samoa. Uh, definitely good on Longer as well. Angleville, I prefer fast jeep, but that will be a topic for another video. Anyways. Two rifles on the field right now. Second one going to move to the middle. Going to cap a bit of munitions if he can. Generally, a lot of early American uh, capping orders on Samoa uh, skip past these early points, these middle points, because it's very easy for an MG or a Volk squad in cover to shut you down. But this strategy absolutely wants to have as much munitions as possible. And with that in mind, it's definitely worth it to at least try for these uh, middle munitions points because if your opponent gives them to you then hey that's an extra grenade or two that you're going to be able to throw when your first flank hits as we see right there fast grenades coming up and korean army is preparing himself for an attack as we see right here this rifle squad coming down this rifle squad backing out because he does not want to fight until he has his grenades this rifle squad down here going to be prepared to move across this area if we look at the tactical map right now We've got the flank proceeding right here. All three units coming in at the same time. A little bit of readjusting going down based on the grenades. Pioneers died. Engineers died up here. But as we see, no damage done to the done to the the MG. No grenade even thrown in this situation. He is going to kill a Volk squad, which is very very nice and not something you can always count on doing but uh, Siberian just instantly cold retreated his MG and that's because what well, what else does he do he's kind of backed into a corner here he's got a rifle squad coming from this angle he's got rifle squads coming from this angle his Volks have been forced out of cover from the grenades even if the grenades don't do damage you are indirectly doing damage with them by forcing your opponent to move which in turn means you're forcing your opponent to do less damage to you because units in motion have less accuracy in general are going to be doing less damage than stationary units you're also forcing your opponent out of cover which means you're going to be doing a lot more damage to your opponent because he's not gaining the benefits of the green cover especially on a map like Samoa where there's so much red cover right beside the green cover where any sort of pushing out of uh, green cover has a very good likelihood of forcing your opponent into red cover which massively amplifies the damage you're going to be dealing and you've already forced your opponent's mg to move which means that mg is essentially a non-issue and that also means you have a vastly superior uh, infantry force at least in the very early engagements that first flanking engagement specifically Looking inside the base right now, we have the chair center up, we have the supply yard up, we're going to be getting a motor pool up right about now, build it, build the motor pool, don't make me look like an idiot, come on, he's still not building it, he's teasing me, he's taunting me, I think he built it, I'm pretty sure he built it, but I don't remember, he's, he's too busy f focusing on microwing this insanity in the middle, but he's going to lose a rifle squad anyways, no, he lost a rifle squad, he did it. He still hasn't built his motor pool, but he's killing stuff. Stuff's dying. He's gonna try to recruit this MG, I think. Probably. That's a very low health Volk squad. 
He's hopefully gonna try to, yeah, he's gonna try to kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, come on, come on. That's the most infuriating feeling in the world, oh my god. Oh, I'm so sorry, Korean Army, that's so painful. But yeah, anyways, uh, we do have a motor pull-up right now. Now, we do have a, tr uh, a weapon support center coming up before any sort of motor pull tech. That's perfectly fine to do in this situation where... Korean Army's opponent has already shown Tier 2. He showed a pack just now there. And that means Korean Army is absolutely going to be able to invest in this early sniper. I mean, relatively early, of course. Um, early being before any sort of other tech, such as an M8. Uh, so we are going to have an early sniper out for Korean Army. But as I mentioned before, he is going to still go for that M8. He's going to go for that M8 for mobility, for map control, and for anti-harass. He's going to use it a lot on this right-hand side to keep this VP, to keep his opponent off this cutoff, which is a very important point in this matchup on this map. This cutoff, and this cutoff, mostly this cutoff down here, however, especially in tournament play, because it is fixed positions and the Wehrmacht player is always starting out on the top. This is a very difficult point for the Wehrmacht player to hold, while at the same time being a very important point for the Wehrmacht player to hold, because it directly cuts off this plus 16 munitions point, which is absolutely vital to any sort of Wehrmacht play. Wehrmacht, as a faction, is so incredibly reliant on munitions, for anti-tank, for healing, for mines, for defending flanks, all that stuff absolutely need as much as many munitions as possible. And cutting off your Wehrmacht opponent from the munitions on this right hand side can be very, very troublesome for the Wehrmacht player to deal with. Now, as we see, we did lose another we lost another rifle squad, which sucks. But we've got a sniper with only three kills, which isn't too much. But we have a lot of map control for Korean Army, which is very good. We're going to have that M8 come out now that these squads are all reinforced. We're probably going to see that start up very, very soon. There it is right there. And our opponent had... K K Korean Army's opponent, rather, has had Tier 2 for quite a long time. And he's still getting this getting this M8 and we're running a little long on this replay but I do want to keep it going just to kind of show you guys how he maneuvers this M8 where he positions it and his like how he how he thinks about a late M8 because you have to completely think differently about an M8 that comes at this point in the game versus an M8 that comes at a very early point in the game when your focus is to harass is to be a shock unit and deal damage now on a side note interesting to note that this rifle squad went right for this cutoff and not for this uh, fuel point absolutely because you really want to be cutting off this munitions but as I mentioned before as Korean army did before using these buildings to his advantage as we notice right here he sees the pack but the pack absolutely cannot be doing any damage at all right now this building completely blocking it this building is going to be annoying as well this building right here there's a lot of shot blocking in this little area and this is going to make it rather difficult for uh for siberian to regain this cutoff because he's going to have to position his ma or his packs a lot and as we see right there the ma does go down but it's forced two packs out of his opponent and that's very that completely pays for itself you don't need to deal any damage with an m8 if your opponent goes for two packs because the damage has already been dealt if you don't build another vehicle what's your opponent's two packs going to be doing he spent 600 no uh he spent 580 rather manpower on two units that killed a unit worth 280 manpower because at this point fuel is a non-issue for the american player he doesn't really care too much about his fuel it's mostly manpower uh, so we have an, a Wehrmacht player who spent twice as much as the American player on units that are now entirely useless. There's zero utility in a pack if your opponent does not have any vehicles. And that's... You don't need to deal damage with your M8 if your opponent's going to go for two packs completely blindly like that. Now, given the late vehicles, it's perfectly reasonable that uh, that Siberian was expecting something like Tank Depot play or something like that. Which is which is, you know, I'm not going to fault him. I'm simply saying, in a situation where your opponent has spent so much manpower killing so little of your manpower, it's okay if he kills that manpower because he has dead weight in the form of his packs that are absolutely not going to be doing anything 
for the mid and mid late game going on to the late game where something like a a off map combat group might make the pack more effective because you're gonna have something like an m10 coming out but with that little tidbit out of the way i'm gonna wrap up this first episode of strat talk as always i appreciate comments i appreciate discussions i will try my best to reply to any and all questions posted in the comments or on any of the threads that I put up for this episode. Let me know how you how you like it. Let me know if you have any suggestions for strategies that you would like me to cover. I am open to ideas. I'm going to try to cover a wide variety of different strategies. Even might even try some, uh, some Brit and Panzer Elite strats. Not going to make any promises on that front and definitely going to be focusing on vanilla factions for the first few episodes but that is absolutely not out of the question in the future so thank you for watching guys i hope you enjoyed this and i will see you guys next time have a good one